Okay, thank you very much. My name's Martin Thomas. I'm from Works Liberty. I'll start by thanking the Worker Communist Party of Iran, Hecatist Official Line, for organising this event and inviting us to speak. Um, like Roger, I'm going to take my uh, starting point from the fact that it's now a bit more than 10 years since the great economic crash of 2008. Now, the, that economic crash has had an effect of uh, discrediting and making huge gaps in official politics, official neoliberalism, which before that seemed all-powerful. Before that, it seemed all-powerful. <coughs> However, when a, a socialist movement, a communist movement, is not made just by reaction against capitalism, when people rise in struggle, the political meaning they give to their activity depends on what they can hear, on what's available to them, in terms of political answers. So if you take the uh, textile workers in Lawrence, um, which we saw in the video at the start, they were able to interpret, to understand their struggle in a particular way because of the efforts in the years before that of the socialists organised in the industrial workers of the world and in other groups. So you saw their newspaper, Solidarity, in the, um, in the video. Our paper is called Solidarity too, and we're trying to do the same sort of thing. Back in 2008, the hard fact is that we, the revolutionary Marxist left, were too weak. And thus, what happened is that many of the rebellions Many of the rebellious impulses were neutralised or they were channelled by the right wing. Um, so Roger, for example, referred to Brazil. What happened in Brazil is you've got a series of mobilisations on the street which in the end are channelled politically by the far right, by Bolsonaro. He is able to gain an increase in support from what starts off as a social rebellion. Uh, we had something of the same sort on a smaller scale in Britain with the whole story of Brexit. And, um, so in 2016, we saw genuine social discontent being channeled into a project of raising borders, of uh, economic uh, nationalism, of uh, hostility to migrant rights because the, the left was too weak to present a case against Brexit and the political scene was dominated by people saying don't do Brexit because uh, that would disturb the status quo and it's all right. And thus you see, despite uh, the increase in uh, general sympathy for socialist ideas in a general way in the USA, we've seen the triumph of Trump. Um, and thus we've seen after many uh, conflicts and struggles in Italy, the triumph of the Salvini government. And thus um, I think uh, we have to say the Arab Spring was defeated. It, you know, we can see that you had this huge rebellion, and it, but we now know what the result is in Egypt, in Syria, and it's been a regression, not an advance. So, um, what do we make? I want to talk about two issues, and uh, then try to put this in a frame. Firstly, I referred to um, Brexit. So, um, you ha we've had in Britain a large section of the left 
supported Brexit. So we now have, for example, Nigel Farage, Tory, UKIP, Bigot, has launched his new Brexit party, and he has people who consider themselves left-wingers as supporting it and candidates for it. We have other groups on the left supporting Brexit, and they say, well, the, the EU is right-wing and neoliberal, as if it weren't the case that Britain had been the pioneer of everything right-wing and neoliberal you can see in the EU, as if it weren't the case that Brexit doesn't mean a move away from neoliberalism, it means higher borders and it means in particular a blow against the rights of people to move across borders, to move freely, to live and to work, at least in Europe, where they want. That's what it's a, it's a right-wing nationalist move. So, that's what's happened with Brexit. So, uh, what we, what we did, what in 2016, we did what we could with our resources to present a left-wing case against Brexit, not for the EU as it is, but for remaining, rebelling and transforming. And that's what we're doing now. That's what we will be doing in the run-up to the Euro elections, um, despite the very um, timid and very poor um, performance of the Labour Party on this issue. The other issue I want to speak about is Israel and Palestine. It's one of the great unresolved national conflicts in the world, um, and it's one that uh, occupies a lot of people's attention. Uh, next Saturday we will be on the streets um, at the same place as an official Palestine Solidarity Campaign demonstration, but with different politics. We will be going there with Marxist politics. Uh, the Marxist and the Leninist answer on the national conflicts says is based on the equality of nations. It's based on the right of all nations to self-determination. And it says, when you have a situation of two nations in conflict, your answer is not to find which nation you want to conquer the other. It is to support the right to self-determination of both nations. And that's our, our view on Israel and Palestine. On that, in that issue too, we've seen something of what I described um, uh, earlier of uh, positive left-wing impulses being thwarted, diverted by the domination of right-wing political machines. In 1987 and 1988, the first intifada created the possibility of a democratic settlement of the issue. That is, it, but it moved the Palestine Liberation Organization away from its old uh, revanchist position, its old position of destroying Israel. It moved it towards a two-state position. And it had, it had sufficient impact in Israel to create a potential majority there for peace among the Israeli Jews. What happened? over the 1990s particularly and in the early 2000s is a rise of the right wing among both the Israeli Jews and the Palestinians in the shape of Netanyahu, in the shape of Hamas, which destroyed those possibilities at least for the time being. And so now we see Netanyahu talking about annexing to Israel, making, declaring part of Israel's official territory, 60% of the West Bank, reducing the Palestinians to over 160 little pockets of land, areas A and areas B of the West Bank, are one, over 160 separate pockets of land, each surrounded by the Israeli military, and saying, well, that's the nearest you're going to get to a Palestinian state. So, um, we will be on the streets with um, uh, as many comrades as we can on the 11th of May demonstrating for a socialist and a democratic answer to this conflict. And we want to, um, particularly we want to thank the Working Communist Party of Iran 
for supporting us on the first protest we organised about this at the Israeli Embassy on the 18th of April, soon after the Israeli elections. I hope others of you will come and join us on that day. One of the great um, signs of hope we have at the moment is what is happening among school students, among the very uh, uh, young people on the issue of climate change. Here again we have a revolt uh, with a tremendous socialist and democratic potential. Uh, and uh, it's among young people who haven't been um, miseducated and poisoned, by, and poisoned by the defects of the left as it exists. Those young people are going to be looking for, some of them, are going to be looking for political answers. Where they go depends on what's available to them. It depends on what political groups are able to present ideas to make them accessible and visible to young working class people and to, to do that in a way that connects up internationally and brings the lessons of uh, the whole international working class struggle to those people and which offers them an international vision. Uh, a great deal depends now on what we do with that movement and with the other movements which will certainly come in the, in the coming years. We should learn from the fact that in the years after 2008 we, we tried to organise politically out of the anger and resentment and on the whole we were defeated. We were defeated because we were not strong enough. We can only become stronger at the moment by, uh, by starting off from small meetings like this, by discussing among ourselves, by getting our ideas clear, by encouraging each other to devote ourselves more energetically to that struggle. But as the school students are telling us, the future of the world depends on that. The future of the world depends on our ability to go from small meetings like this to take a message of hope to the new generation coming into politics. To push aside a lot of the wreckage which has um, made the left unable to take the initiative and to organise a new revolutionary socialist and communist movement. Thank you, comrades.